and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. This is episode number two of the Coastal Landscapes and Change series over here on my channel. Today we're going to be looking at geology and the coast, all that entails it, different kinds of coastlines, discordant, concordant, that kind of thing. Please do stick around if you find this useful. I'm going to go through the whole of the coast series over here on my channel so please do subscribe down below. I upload one every week on a Monday at 4.30pm. Please do share this with a friend if you find it useful. I'm just making it because it's exactly what I wanted during my A-levels and so I thought I'd help you guys with it. So please do subscribe. We might as well just get straight on into it. The Jurassic Coast. The coast of South Devon and East Dorset is widely regarded as being among the most stunning scenery in the UK. In 2001, UNESCO awarded World Heritage status to a stretch of it. It was the first coast in the UK to be given this title. This particular stretch of coast is often called the Jurassic Coast, after the geological period during which the rocks were formed. The World Heritage status comes from its unique geological walk through time. It demonstrates the whole Jurassic period with abundant fossils. The Lulworth Crumple. Stair Hole on the Jurassic Coast lies less than half a mile west of the more famous Lulworth Cove. At Stair Hole, the sea has eroded through limestone and clays to create a small cove. It's the best place to see the Lulworth Crumple. One of the best known examples of limestone folding. Here, thin beds of Purbeck limestone and shale are clearly visible in the side of the cliff. These layers of rock were folded or crumpled in response to tectonic movements about 30 million years ago. Coasts and geological structure. Coastal geomorphology is, is related not only to the underlying rock or rock type, but also to its geological structure, known as lithology. Lithology means any of the following characteristics. The strata, layers of rock, bedding planes, which are horizontal cracks. Natural breaks in the strata, caused by gaps in time during periods of rock formation. Joints, vertical cracks. They are fractures caused either by contraction as sediment dries out or by earth movement during uplift. Folds are formed by pressure during tectonic activity, which makes rock buckle and crumple. This is a perfect example of the Lulworth crumple. Faults are formed when stress or pressure to which rock is subjected exceeds its internal strength, causing it to fracture. The faults then slip or move along fault planes. Dip. This refers to the angle at which rock strata lie, horizontally, vertically, dipping towards the sea, or dipping inland. The relief or height and slope of land is also affected by geology and geological structure. There is a direct relationship between rock type, lithology and cliff profiles. Geology and rates of coastal recession. The geology and lithology of the coast affects the speed at which it erodes or recedes. Igneous rocks such as granite are crystalline, resistant and impermeable. Sedimentary rocks, however, such as limestone, chalk, sandstone and shale are formed in strata. Jointed sedimentary rocks such as sandstone and limestone are permeable. Other sedimentary rocks such as chalk have air spaces between the particles, making them more porous. Shale is fine-grained and compacted, making it impermeable. Metamorphic rocks such as marble and schist are very hard impermeable and resistant. Unconsolidated materials are loose, such as the boulder clay of the Holderness coast. They are not cemented together in any way and therefore are easily eroded. Coasts differ considerably. Some strata project into the sea as headlands, indicating their resistance to erosion. Some strata are more permeable than others. Geology and lithology play key roles in the type of cliff profile produced and the rate at which the coasts erode or recede. Other processes such as weathering and mass movement also affect the rates of erosion and recession. Let's talk about concordant coasts. This is where bands of more resistant and less resistant rock run parallel to the coast. 
Concordant Coasts, located at East Dorset near Poole, the Isle of Purbeck, is the eastern gateway to the Jurassic Coast. Because it's surrounded on three sides by water, it isn't really an island, more so a peninsula. It has distinctive coastal features that are clearly linked to its geology and lithology. The combination of different types of rock on the Isle of Purbeck has led to coastal landscapes ranging from Lulworth Cove to Kimmeridge Bay. Along its southern coast, the different types of rock run in bands parallel to the coast, forming what is known as a concordant coastline. The rock type on Dorset's coast varies between resistant Purbeck limestone, which forms steep cliffs, to less resistant clays and sands. These rock types alternate along the coast, so that where resistant rock is eventually eroded, such as the entrance to Lulworth Cove, allowing the sea to break through the less resistant rock behind. Erosion follows more quickly. At Lulworth, this has led to the formation of a small bay or cove, helped by a local stream, the valley of which makes erosion inland easier. Dalmatian and half coasts. Dalmatian coasts are another type of concordant coastline. They have formed as, as a result of sea level rise. Valleys and ridges run parallel to each other. When the valleys flooded because of sea level rise, the tops of the ridges remained above the surface of the sea as a series of offshore islands that run parallel to the coast. The best example of a Dalmatian coastline is the one that gives the feature its name, the Dalmatian coast in Croatia. Dalmatian coasts are also known as Pacific coasts, such as in southern Chile. Half coasts consist of concordant features, long spits of sand and lagoons, aligned parallel to the coast. These are named after the halves or lagoons of the southern shore of the Baltic Sea, which are enclosed by sand, spits or dunes. Discordant coasts. While the Isle of Purbeck's southern coast is concordant, its eastern coast is discordant. It runs south from Studland Bay to Dalston Head. Here, more resistant rocks folded into ridges emerge at the coast as headlands and cliffs, whilst less resistant rock forms bays. The geology and geological structure of the Isle of Purbeck has influenced the coastal morphology of its eastern coast in the following ways. The Bagshot and Tertiary Bays consist of unconsolidated sands and clays. These are less resistant to erosion and, where exposed to the sea at Studland, have formed a large bay as a result. The chalk is strong and resistant to erosion, so it has formed cliffs and a headland at the coast, known as the Foreland. The weald and beds consist of unconsolidated clay, which, like bagshot and tertiary beds, is less resistant to erosion and has led to the formation of Swanage Bay, where it's exposed to the sea. The Purbeck and Portland beds consist mainly of limestone. This is resistant and has led to the creation of the headlands at Peveril Point and Dalston Head. However, the limestone is also jointed which has created lines of weakness that can be more easily eroded in places. A discordant coastline, therefore, is where the geology alternates between bands of more resistant and less resistant rock, which runs at right angles to the coast. Headlands and bays. Headlands, such as the Foreland and Peveril Point, jut out into the sea, with bays, such as Swanage Bay, lying between them. Headlands and bays commonly form when rocks of different strengths are exposed to the coasts. More resistant rocks, such as chalk and limestone, or igneous and metamorphic rocks, tend to form headlands, whilst weaker rocks, such as shale and clays, are both eroded to form bays. Headlands and bays both affect incoming waves in different ways. Headlands force the incoming waves to refract or bend, concentrating their energy at the headlands, this increases the wave's erosional power, which leads to steepening of the cliffs and their eventual erosion into arches and stacks. By contrast, when waves enter a bay, their energy is dissipated and reduced. This leads to the deposition of sediment, such as sand or shingle, forming a beach. And that is the end of the second episode of the Coastal Landscapes and Change series over here. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something, I hope it was useful. If it was, please do subscribe down below, it really helps me out. I am trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of this year. I don't know how far away we are when I upload this, but you never know. 
um, yeah, please do subscribe down below. It really helps me out. And yeah, I will see you same time, same place next week, Monday, 4.30pm. And next week we're going to be looking at waves and beaches. So I will see you then. Bye guys.